Hello and welcome to Systems Equipment's tutorial on zeroing conveyor scales. This video is intended to explain and demonstrate a standard zeroing of a waybridge in Systems ADP100 GUI blend computers. Having a good zero is vital to ensure accurate scale calibrations and should not be glossed over. Anything to do with the scale, from calibration, using test weights, and of course making mix, all start with a good zero. So let's get started. Every conveyor scale uses two signals to calculate the material flow rate that is going over it. The weight on the load cell idler and the speed the belt is traveling. Zeroing does not have much to do with the speed of the belt, but it is important to have the belt running during the process because the dynamics of the running belt can affect the weight on the idler. So how do you zero a scale? An easy method is using the zero track option when warming up the conveyors. It averages the scale reading and slowly adjusts the zero value to make the reading average to a zero. That method can take some time and can be hard to know when it is good because of the natural bounce of the scales. The ADP100 GUI has a more deliberate way to zero a scale. It's called the Cal by Average screen. You can get to the Cal by Average screen a few different ways. First, the menu options of F8 Utilities, F6 Calibrate Data and Procedure, F1 Ag Scales, and then F2 or F6 depending on what scale you want to zero. The quickest route is to start at the main screen, click on the scale of interest, and Cal by Average is in the menu for that scale. The other way to get there is the calibration by sample of a scale. It has the F3 zero scale menu choice as a reminder that you need to start your calibrations with a good zero. No matter how you get to the screen, it works the same. As you can see here, the screen has just a few menu choices, a live reading from the scale, an always running average clock, and the averaging value. The longer you average a reading, the more stable it will be, and thus, we can feel confident in our zero value if we have patience and help the computer make adjustments at logical times. Most scales have a somewhat repeating cycle of noise or bounce to them. It theoretically should be related to the period or time to make one full revolution of the belt. So if you know the belt takes, let's say, 52 seconds to go all the way around the conveyor, you can use that 52, or even better yet, a multiplier of 52, like 104, 156, or 208, to know that the repeating part of the bounce is canceled out. Watch the average timer, and when it gets close to the value you are looking for, use the F3 option, zero the measured average value. Then, on the second that is your target, hit the confirm and watch the average value to see if it is closer to being centered around zero. For this demo, we will wait 156 seconds, or three times our belt cycle time. Letting the belt get around three or even five times is recommended for better averaging. It is worth noting that the first menu item of restarting the average interval is available in case there has been any weight going over the scale or if the mechanisms of the scale like belt tracking or gravity take-up changes have happened. While we wait, you may be asking why does the zero change all the time? There are several factors in that but one is the fact that load cells have a property called zero drift, and it is based on the way that they sense the weight. Another factor is that it takes only a slight change of weight to make a sizable ton per hour. Just think about 3.6 ton per hour. 
that's 0.06 tons per minute. And divide it by 60 again, and that's 0 0.0001 tons per second. But we take that times 2,000 to get pounds, and you have a 2 pound per second change. That 2 pound per second is equal to 3.6 tons per hour change in signal. Your scale is very sensitive. Okay, we are getting close to our 156 second target. So we hit the F3 option, and as the time hits, we hit F10. Now we can watch the average value. As time goes by, it should get closer to zero. Don't ever expect to get a perfect zero, but if you can get point zero something on the average, you're doing really good. Once you are zeroed well, you will see the average value stay very close to zero as the timer counts up. You are then ready to start mixing, do a six minute test, or begin calibration. Just remember, everything starts with a good zero. We hope this video was helpful in getting your scales zeroed accurately. Watch some of our other videos to help you utilize our software to its potential. It is our goal to make the job of running an asphalt plant simpler and less stressful. Thank you.